Hey, this is Kathy from Kathy Cooks For You and welcome back to my kitchen. I have a yummy treat for you. This is my mom's basic macaroni and cheese recipe. And then I'm going to explode it and show you all these different varieties of macaroni and cheese you can make. Macaroni and cheese is like the most important comfort food on most people's list. It's gonna knock your friends and family socks off. So stay tuned. So how we start this recipe is we are making a traditional white sauce, a bechamel sauce. And to that, we'll be adding all sorts of cheeses and other things. Also, I am making a lot of this because I'm gonna show you so many different varieties. In the recipe below, you'll get a recipe for six people. But I'm doing this because I'm making a lot of different versions and I'm gonna put them in small tins and then I'm gonna bake them all off and then my family and I are gonna try them all. And then I'm putting the rest in the freezer for other days. So I'm putting, we'll just say, a lot of butter in the pan. We're gonna get this nice and melted. All right, our butter is melting and now it's time to put in our flour. Here's the thing also. I've never used a recipe for this and I doubt my mother has either. All right, definitely need more flour. Right, getting some more flour in here. Okay, now it's getting thicker, stickier. That's what we want. And we want to cook this. We want this flour to cook. Flour has a raw flavor. And so we need to cook that raw flavor out of it for about two minutes. You do not want it to brown, so cook it on a low heat. Now we're going to add our milk to this. And I'm putting in six cups to stir. We're gonna see, I have a feeling I'm gonna need more. In fact, I know I am. And at this point, if I put in too much water or too much liquid, you know what I do? I have my handy dandy um, ultra fine flour that doesn't get lumpy when you just sprinkle it in. That if something is ever too runny, then I use my ultra fine, ultra fine flour. It's called Wonder or Wonder and um, comes in a canister and I'll use that instead and then that is very uh, helpful to thicken something up if I put too much liquid in it. I'm just gonna go ahead and put two more cups in and make make what I'm doing here. I mean, it's a lot, guys. You will not be making this much. We're gonna stir this pretty much constantly. When you're dealing with heating milk and you wanna get it to a boil, you do not wanna leave it for very long. So you just stand here and do some stirring. You don't want it on high heat because you'll burn it and then it gets all over the bottom of your pan and it is so hard to clean that up. While we are stirring here, let's talk cheese. Now, my mom likes using like Colby Jack, cheddar, um, yellow cheddar, you know, is what she usually uses. And I have a preference of using white cheddar. And, um, you know, it's just, and I usually use a sharp white cheddar. I like a really pungent flavor to my mac and cheese. So that is going to be up to you in what kind of cheeses you like. So, um, you know, this isn't a cheap meal. You think, oh, I'm not using meat. It's not cheap. Well, cheese is pretty expensive. But what I found is, um, and I like using good cheese. I found this at Walmart. This is under $8, and this is like two pounds of Cabot cheese. Now, at my normal grocery store, eight ounces of this costs four bucks. At this point, we can add some salt and pepper in here. Now, for aesthetics, if you want to use a white pepper, you can do that. I don't mind seeing pepper in my food. We love pepper. And then we're gonna put some, just, we're not gonna put a ton of salt in because cheese is salty. We've got a nice thick sauce, it is not boiled yet. It really, you know, it looks perfect. Let's get a clean spoon and show you what this looks like on the spoon. So it leaves a layer on there. That's what we want. And now it's time for our cheeses. So we're gonna ladle some of this out for a different kind of mac and cheese. And now we're just gonna start breaking up our cheese and putting it in here. 
do not use shredded cheese ever it ruins recipes things will not turn out the same if you use shredded cheese so we're just gonna get this all in here okay i've got a low boil going so this is on low that cheese needs to now melt down oh wow and now this over here we're going to get going with another cheese now with this extra sauce here we are going to add in smoked gouda oh it's going to be so tasty and that was eight ounces of smoked gouda and i think i think i'll put a little of this cream havarti that i bought and put that in there too why not this is super creamy. This is a semi-soft, super creamy. That might be enough. We'll just put this in here. <laughs> you see how my recipe can be adjusted to however much cheese you have. I have decided to put the rest of that cheddar cheese in here. Because we don't want this to taste like a white sauce. We want it to taste like a cheese sauce, right? Put the rest of the cheddar cheese in there and then the jury's still out as to whether I'm going to put the rest of this Havarti cheese in there or not. Oh heck, let's just do it. Let's just do it. It's mac and cheese. Comfort food. This is what it's supposed to be. A super cheesy mess, right? Okay, our sauces are done and I bought these nice little tins with lids so that we can put some of this in the freezer also. So I just wanna talk about noodles for a little bit with you. Now, this is my favorite, the, I don't know if I'm saying this right, the Kavaptali. Um, it's the best noodle in the world to me. I love its corkscrew pasta. And this particular brand, not only does, um, does it taste good and have a lot of good texture, but it has little lines all around it. And so do their little elbow macaronis too. So they have lines like ridges going all around. And do you know what those are for? That's for something to adhere and get stuck in. So this is a, these are great pastas to put sauces on because it just kind of helps soak it in there and also get stuck and to stay on the pasta. I have the cavaptali, I have two things of the macaroni, then I have a mixture of macaroni and, and um, spirals. Spirals also are so good for mac and cheese as well as shells uh, because the mac and cheese, the cheese gets stuck in all these spirals. So spirals is another great choice. Uh, I didn't have shells, so shells is the only other one that I think works well for this. And the other thing is, is that I did not rinse my pasta. The reason why I did not rinse my pasta is because I want the starch on here because that starch is going to help my mac and cheese stick to the pasta and that is what I want. So let's get going with um, getting our sauce in here and I'm just going to hopefully stir the sauces in here, these containers, just mix it all in and then I'd like to put all my add-ins to make each one of these taste different and spectacular. I think I made way too much sauce. So just a disclaimer, if you make too much sauce, no worries, it freezes fantastic. And you can use it to pour over vegetables. It is so good over cauliflower. And so don't worry if you've made too much sauce. So I'm just gonna ladle some of this on here on each of these. These three are taking the cheddar for right now. Let's see. So it's Three ladles will probably be enough. And they're all gonna have the same cheddar base. This one doesn't seem to have as much noodles, so we're just gonna put two scoops for now in. What we're gonna do with number one is we're gonna make this a little Mexican style. So we're gonna add in some fried up chorizo right in there. Mix that all up. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. Let's get that mixed in. 
And then this is one of my mom's new favorites. Not the chorizo, I added that. She'll be like, Kathy, you always gotta make everything so fancy. Which I don't think chorizo is fancy. So get that all mixed in. Looks like it has a good amount of cheese sauce. You can add more if you want. If you add too much, you know, sometimes too much of a good thing doesn't work. We'll just put just a little bit more in there and have it on the top. And then, okay, here's, here's the part that my mom discovered. She found these French's, French fried jalapenos. You know how you have the French's um, onion, onion, French fried onions for um, like your holidays, you put it on your green bean casserole? Well, this is jalapenos. They are absolutely spectacular and spicy. If I can get it open. Can I get it open? <laughs> stab it okay they don't want you to get in there these are amazing they're spicy and this is gonna be your crispy on top if you really want it spicy you could chop up a few fresh jalapenos and put in it but I find for my family this is enough okay that is done oh that is gonna smell so good cooking. So we have this one done. This is my Mexican jalapeno homemade macaroni and cheese. On to number two. Okay, let's get all those noodles all stirred up and the deliciousness in them. This has more noodles in it, it looks like. I'm gonna put a little more sauce, another scoop, and then we've got some chicken here and I've got buffalo sauce. So we're gonna put some buffalo sauce all over our chicken, moisten it up, and I just went and bought a, ooh, rotisserie. I think I poured a little too much in there. That's all right. Maybe not. Oh, that looks good. Now, I'm not gonna stir this completely in because I don't want this to turn orange. So I'm just gonna like, Put it on top and just kind of like push it in. And here's your choice of what you're gonna put on this. Now, you can put anything crunchy that you have. It doesn't matter. I mean, you can put uh, like Cheez-Its on it. Cheez-Its. You can put Ritz crackers. I think for this one, because I already have this orange, I think this would be way too orangey. Um, it might be delicious, but a little too orangey for me. So I think I'm gonna go with French fried onions on this one. I love French fried onions. See how it cuts some of the oranginess? It just looked a little fake to me, and I don't like that look. And there you have number two. Buffalo style chicken homemade mac and cheese. Okay, for number three, we don't have a lot here. It's just a little. And I'm going to add cottage cheese to it. Cottage cheese kind of lightens up the um, tartness of the cheddar. We're just gonna add that in. And this one will be a more of a moist, juicy one. Now this one, since it's kind of bland in color, how about we put the cheese that's on that one? That one will be pretty. Let's just smush some cheese that's on there. Number three, mac and cheese with a nice cheese it crust. The last two, we're going to use this Gouda cheese sauce. And I think I should have enough of both these to put on here. Okay, our first one, we are going to add some bacon to. I know I should make my own bacon, but I don't like the smell of it, right? So I use the bacon in the packages. And then we're going to put some of our cheese on top. Oh, wow. Such comfort food. These noodles can handle a little more cheese. OMG. So we have 
Gouda, our smoked Gouda, and then we have our bacon that's smoked. So what would be good on this? We could go jalapenos, we could go um, French fried onions, we've got some Ritz crackers, um, we could do potato chips, corn chips. I think we're gonna go Ritz crackers. So we are just going to do that. Number four, smoked Gouda mac and cheese with bacon and Ritz crackers. Can you put a vegetable in comfort food? Sure you can. My mom always does this one. Now I just bought a bag of fresh cauliflower and um, broccoli in those steamable bags and steamed it. I'm gonna pour all that in here. This is like my favorite way. All that fancy stuff isn't always necessary. Break up your goodies here. Break them into smaller pieces. And then we're going to pour the rest of our smoked Gouda on there. And stir this in. And to stick with the vegetables, we're going to do French fried onions on this one. OMG. So there you have it. My mom's macaroni and cheese recipe made five different ways, and it can be made into countless different ways. You just have that white sauce, and you go from there with your cheeses. Thank you so much for watching Kathy Cooks For You. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. That's a great way to support me. And also, I would love to hear from you. I hope you have a great day.